Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. As you would have seen in the thumbnail, this video is all about permanent residency in UK, which is called ILR, indefinite leave to remain. So this video is for those who are applying for the ILR, who are researching for the ILR, or who are even away, far away from the ILR process. But this video will give you an insight on the process will give you details of what you will need and in fact will help you prepare for the ILR. So just to let you know, I am not a visa advisor or immigration advisor of any sort. This is just my experience and I'm just sharing what I went through when I was applying for the ILR. When I was searching for a similar kind of video, I did not find much information and that's why I'm making this video and give you as much information as possible which will help you guys apply for the ILR smoothly. So before I start the video, please, please don't forget to subscribe. We work very hard on these videos, so a little encouragement will be nice. So let's start. So I have broken this video into small sections so that it will be easier for you guys to understand. So there will be seven sections in this video and the seven topics are number one, eligibility criteria, number two, life in the UK test, three, application form, number four, documents you will require and this is the most important one, number five, costs related to the ILR process, number six, things to do after you have filled the application. And number seven would be my personal experience and few tips. So stay till the end of the video where I'll be sharing few important tips and few documents which you would need for this application. So let's start with the eligibility criteria for the ILR process. So there are multiple routes through which you can apply for the ILR. The most common being five year and the 10 year route but there are options where you can apply for the ILR within two or three years of your stay in the UK. But then you have to be on a different kind of visa. So I went through the five year route. So my experience was I finished five years in the UK. In fact, four years and 11 months in the UK. And then I started the application process. So you can apply for the ILR 28 days before you finish your five years in the UK. You can also apply for the ILR in two to three years if you are on tier one visa or you can apply for the ILR once you have completed 10 years in the UK. But this video is my experience of this process. So I'll be sharing the five year route process. So for the five years, these are the criteria. So you have to be a skilled worker or a tier two general visa holder. You should not be outside the UK for more than 180 days in any 12 months of your five years. You should have a minimum salary of 25,600 pounds per annum or a per hour rate of 10.10 .10 pounds. And you will need a letter from your sponsor, your current employer. And they have to state that they will need you and they will continue to sponsor you. The format of this letter I will provide at the end of the video. I will hide all the information details, but it will give you an idea of what to ask for, uh, from your employer. And the final one, and of course the most important one, you should not have any criminal records against your name and you should be a proper law abiding citizen of the UK. The second one is life in the UK test. So life in the UK test, you can take any time before the ILR, you can take years before your ILR application, but minimum is three days in advance. So it's, it's straightforward. You have to book the test, study for the test and take the test. And this is the most important part. Once you have taken the test and you have passed the test, you will get a code in that email. And that code you have to use while applying for the ILR process. So this is the most important test and you have to pass this test to apply for the ILR. So here is my experience of the life in the UK test. So I booked my center in Stratford, London. When I saw the syllabus of the test, I got a bit worried. But let me assure you, it's not difficult. I think I studied for a month and I was able to pass the test easily. I did not spend a penny on the reading material. 
I just searched online for all the mock tests there are for this test. So there are multiple websites where there are hundreds of mock tests and I just took all of them. Believe me, I think I have taken 200 mock tests. I kept on taking the mock test till I started passing comfortably. And that's it. I did not do anything else. I will share the links to these websites in the description box. These websites will have all the mock tests. What to expect on the test day? So I went to the center 15 to 20 minutes before my test time. I was provided with a locker where I kept all my belongings and you have to enter the test empty hand. Uh, you should not be having any electronic device with you, of course. It took me, I think, 12 minutes to finish the test. So basically, if you know the answer, you know the answer. You can't think of an answer there. So if you prepare well, it will, it will be very easy. And you will not get the marks immediately in the, on the screen once you finish the test. You will get an email. So I got the email, I think, in 15 minutes after I submitted the test. And it will have the passing percentage and the code which I just mentioned. So I got the code, I passed the test, and now that brings us to part three of the process, applying for the ILR and filling the application. So the application form you can get on gov.uk website. I filled the application form from there. Because this was a tier two general process, I had filled set O form. And this form was pretty straightforward, but it's a lengthy form. You will have to spend time on filling the details, but then it's not tricky at all. And you will need to fill the code you got from your life in the UK test. So I want to highlight two questions in the application where you might have to be very vigilant. Number one, they'll ask you in the last five years, where have you been outside UK? So that's pretty straightforward. You have to mention all the countries you have visited in the last five years. And the second question, which is a bit weird question is, have you previously lived in a country outside the UK, including your country of birth? So in this one, you have to provide all the countries you have lived outside UK. That means if you're from India and you were born in India, you have to mention that the date you were born in India and from then, when did you step outside India? You have to mention that date. So I have filled this form. I have provided my date of birth and then first time I visited any other country outside India and then second time I've visited any country outside India. So you have to mention all this information in, in the application. So the next one is the most important part of this process the documents you will need for the ILR application. This is the most talked topic and most people have asked me questions around the documents I have provided. So let's go through the set. I will definitely provide a list of documents at the end of the video, but let's discuss it now. So this is a list of documents which I can't remember, but I have it in front of me on the screen. So I'll just read it out to you guys and explain what I have done. So the first document is the evidence of immigration status. So this is not your BRP. I also got confused and this is confusing because they're asking for an evidence of immigration and BRP is the most important evidence of our immigration, but they're not asking for a BRP card in this one. They're asking for any letter, any correspondence you have got from the home office. In my case, I lost my BRP and I applied for a replacement BRP. So I got a letter from the home office mentioning that my replacement BRP was successfully dispatched and I will get it in a few days. So that's the home office letter I provided. You can provide any home office letter, which can be your extension letter or any correspondence you have got from the home office. This is your document. So I won't be able to tell you what you have got but you would have got something from home office confirming your name and your details in that letter. So the next document is a consent or a declaration form. So if you and your partner or spouse name is there on a document and you are providing this document for ILR, you need your partner or the spouse 
to sign this declaration or consent form. You will get this consent form when you have filled the application and you will see the document section there you will get an option to download this form. You can download it and you have to sign the first part and the second part your spouse or partner needs to sign. Document 3 and 4 is very straightforward. You need to provide last 6 months bank statements and last 6 months pay slips. Number 5 is your P60 form. You need to provide last 5 years P60 form. Your company should be able to provide it. I also got a bank letter. I requested my bank to provide a letter where they have mentioned that the salary is getting credited to this account for last 5 years and has the current amount mentioned and uh, my details mentioned in, on that letter. The next document is a very important document. You need to ask your employer to provide a letter which will state that they will need you in the future and I will provide again a format of the letter which my uh, employer has provided. Of course, I will remove my details from it but you will get an idea of what you have to ask. Normally your HR would know here again what they have to provide. So the next document is absence letter. This is again a very important letter and it will take time to uh, create this document. So basically you have to provide all the details of last 5 years where you have traveled outside UK. So the exact dates on which you traveled out and traveled in. So now this document took some effort from me. I had to check my passport and check all the stamps which I had on my passport and created an Excel sheet. In that you will have to mention your in dates and out dates and the countries you have visited. So if you have visited India, you have visited some other country, you have to mention that and the date you went out of UK and the date you traveled back to UK. Again, I will show you an, an example of the spreadsheet I have provided at the end of the video. I also cross verified the dates, uh, checking my emails for the tickets and the bookings I have made. This is very important actually and you have to, you have to be very sure for these dates. The next document is document where you need to provide a proof of your English speaking background. So if you have taken an IELTS exam uh, which, you, which you used for your first visa application, you can use the same uh, results or mark sheets. In my case, I got a UK NARIC certification for the college I studied from, my engineering college. So UK NARIC basically confirms that the college I studied from is comparable to a British standard for English and uh, I got this way back in 2016 for my first visa application. It in fact has my Indian address on it and that was sufficient this time as well for my ILR process. So either you can use your IELTS mark sheet or you can get a UK NARIC certification for the college you have studied from. The next document is the degree certificate. So I got a degree uh, when I passed my engineering college. So I just provided that certificate uh, as a supporting document. Number 11 is address proof. So for address proof, I provided multiple documents just to be on the safer side. So we have bought a house. So we have a mortgage summary document. I mean, if you are renting, you can provide your rent agreement. Then I provided my council tax bill, my phone bill, my electricity and gas bill. And to be on the safer side, I provided my life insurance uh, details and my mortgage insurance uh, details. I also provided our marriage certificate because a few bills like council tax or mortgage documents, these are co-owned by my wife and uh, myself. So I had provided my marriage certificate to be on the safer side. The next document uh, you have to provide is the scans of all your passport pages. This is again very important. You have to scan all the pages, even the blank pages of your passport, you have to scan everything. I provided my promotion and height letter just to show that I was an important part of my company. I also provided my driving license to give them a better idea and of course the BRP just to be sure. So by now you have submitted your application online and you have gathered all your documents. The next step is you have to book an appointment in UK VCAS. That's UK VCAS website. There you have to book an appointment for your biometrics. And as soon as you get a date and pay online for your appointment, 
you will get a portal there you have to upload all the documents i have mentioned in the document part of the video you don't need any physical copies and you just need to submit all the documents soft copy online another thing is that you won't get a uk vcas slots so easily your biometric appointment slots i had to pay 71 pounds to get a slot next week so that's a bit challenging so once you get your credentials and once you log in on to the uk vcas portal you will get a page where you need to upload all the documents and you can keep uploading your documents till the last moment so i kept on uploading all the documents and even though i uploaded all the documents i could find i did not click on the submit button i kept it in the draft state so what happened was 48 hours before the application the submit button got disabled and i panicked a little bit but then when i called uk vikas i found out that i mean it's not required to submit all the documents once you upload it it's uploaded and they can also view it so they told me when i appear for the appointment they will submit the documents on behalf of me so please do not panic if you don't see the submit uh, option 48 hours before your appointment date you must be wondering what happens at the appointment center so it's pretty straight forward and very similar to what we went through for the visa extension so you arrive there 30 minutes early you are you are called inside the the center uh, you go in with all your documents you are called into a room uh, there was a lady on the other end and uh, she was very polite very helpful so as i mentioned i forgot to click on the submit button so i asked the lady to read out all the documents which i had already uploaded she kindly read out all the documents and i just double confirmed it once she uh, clicked on the submit button the next was the picture and the uh, fingerprints and it was done so the moral of the story is please click on the submit option 48 hours before your appointment don't keep it as a draft once she was telling me the list of the documents i could not remember all the documents but i thought because i've uploaded everything it should be there so let's come on to the costs involved in the alr process so the application process itself will cost you around 2400 pounds per person the live in the uk test will cost 50 pounds and the normal decision time is 6 months which is a lot so i paid 500 pounds extra to expedite the process so that i can get the decision in 5 days if i would have paid 800 pounds extra i would have got the decision in 2 days so you have two options one is 500 pounds another one is 800 pounds or you could not pay anything just the application fee of 2400 and you will get the decision in 6 months since i paid 500 pounds to uh, get the decision in 5 days I got my success email in just two days, and I got my BRP in just seven working days. Well, that is all the information I could provide on my experience and the ILR process. Well, I have provided a lot of personal experience throughout the video, but I would like to conclude by saying, don't worry, this is not a very tricky process. Do not overthink this process. Do not provide too many documents. which are not needed i have watched videos and i was shocked to see people providing 250 documents just provide the documents which you feel is required listen to your gut feeling and don't overdo or underdo the documents so if you are eligible for the ila and you have all the documents and of course you are a law abiding citizen you will get an ila there is no reason for not giving you an ila so just believe in that and fill the application process without overthinking things i worry too much was what if i fail the uk life in the uk test fine i'll take it again what if there are some missing documents cool i mean they will reach out to me for those documents well guys i hope this was useful i have provided as much information as i can to help you better i have also provided screenshots at the end of the documents i have submitted If you have liked the video please do not forget to subscribe if you have questions please do comment 
and I'll try to answer to the best of my knowledge. In the end, I would like to say good luck and hope you have a smooth ILR process. All the best. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment as well.